So after almost a year, it's time to talk about AEW again. But yeah, don't expect this to be a regular thing. I just enjoyed the last episode so much, as well as Dynasty. So I want to start by talking about Tony Khan's comments regarding AEW being Pepsi and the WWE being Harvey Weinstein. It's not a diplomatic thing to say. Like, not at all. But man, don't sweep this under the rug. It's not just Vince. It's a lot of people associated with the WWE then, now, and forever. I don't like that people are making fun of Tony Khan instead of talking about an actual crime. Human trafficking, sex trafficking. That just happens to be taking place in a company you like. But yeah, overall, the situation is a negative. He should have been talking about his own company instead of bringing up the competition in that NFL draft show that apparently millions were watching. So yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts about that. Time to get to the show. So as for the show, I wrote this really long script that I'm gonna try to summarize it because I'm also in a rush. So yeah, to open the show, the new elite enter Young Bucks, Kazuchika Okada, and Jack Perry. This is really cool. I like that there's a sort of overarching storyline that happens all throughout the show and eventually leads to the main event. It's sort of a plot A. Jack Perry was definitely the main character of the show, but as I will discuss during the next match, I think the first black AEW champion should have had an equal presence in Dynamite. I know they're doing a thing on Collision, but come on, he's the AEW world champion. Fresh off winning that title, he should have had like time to talk before or after his match. And yeah, I don't like that this Orange Cassidy segment basically opened the show. I mean, I like it. It's well done. Like, if I was Trent, if I, if I like, hated Orange Cassidy this much, it would make perfect sense to attack him before the whole segment, like the scheduled choice segment. He cut a good promo stating his intentions, which are all valid. Pretty malicious, too. After all you've been through with Orange Cassidy, this is how you, like, view him. It's all very, very evil. I like that... There's attention being placed on Chuck Taylor. He has to make the choice. He's also talking for the first time. Honestly, he's my favorite best friend. But I think the choice should have been, like, stewed on even longer. Just add a couple of more seconds, zoom in on Chuck's face or something, and have it be more dramatic than this. So yeah, parking lot match on Rampage should be on Collision. So next for Mox's promo, it's the standard John Moxley promo. Very eloquent. I like the placement of the words. Puts over New Japan, puts over Hobbs, puts over the match at the end of the show. And now for Swerve's match against the ROH television champion, Kyle Fletcher. So yeah, first of all, the match was cool. I like both guys. They both move like main eventers. Or how I perceive AEW main eventers should move like. A lot of airtime in their movements. They're well proportioned and like thick and tall enough. I like the match being back and forth since Cal is also a champion and he's a lot fresher than Swerve. Smooth opening wrestling that leads up to the main part of the match, which is Swerve selling his foot. That's my favorite like spot of the match, like the whole process of this. It's convincing and I like the legwork that happens after. I also like the finish, where we have like a partial halfway swerve stomp, followed by the swerve kick, whatever that's called. But I don't like the play calling part, it's so corny. Get that football shit out of the wrestling, come on. But for what I don't like, I don't like that they use Kyle for this, since if you're gonna use a member of the Don Cal's family, it should be to set up the match with Will Ospreay, in which Will loses. Yeah, Will loses at double or nothing and then wins at All In. Or, you know, hold it off till next year. Will can go without a title for one year. But you're not building a feud against Will Ospreay. So honestly, they could have used anyone else here. Sammy Guevara, maybe a Kip Sabian. But of course, the match has to be less competitive. I also don't like that the main overarching story is being, like, inserted into this match. Like, a screen half and half happens, and it's, like, rubbing in your face that swerves like secondary to the show and the last thing is honestly like even two minutes just have swerve cut a promo come on before or after the match but yeah this match was tv main event pay-per-view undercard next segment is thunder rosa and diana perazzo so thunders improved in her promos 
I like that she incorporates speaking Spanish like a sort of Mexican mom. It's just like how Asuka does it, but Thunder talks in English before. So we then get a nice pull-apart brawl where I can understand what they're saying as they're like going at each other. Really cool segment, but I don't like that the match is on Rampage, just like with Trent versus Chuck. It should be on Collision or even better. Have the feud go on until double or nothing. Not everything needs to be for the title and a non-women's title feud would be a good sign, a good like sort of signal to your women's division that you trust them. So yeah, moving on, I guess we have like the women's segments in like a block. We have Mina Shirakawa versus Anna J. So yeah, here we go. My favorite stardom wrestler. What a gorgeous woman Mina Shirakawa is. Not only that, but she has good charisma in the ring out of it. She is good enough in the ring to have it not be awkward, but she's not as good as a Suzu or a Julia or like a Mayu Watani. Yeah, Anna Jay is definitely improving. She's a lot less annoying in her heel work, a lot less shouty, and she doesn't move like a diva anymore. The match was like a standard heel versus face match. Mina Shirakawa makes like, the face controlled part of the match which is usually the start really fun she has the in-ring charisma down with all of the taunting and stuff anna heals it up in the middle portion and then we have a cool climax spot of the match here was the diving knee drop which would tear my acl if i would do it i gym but this move looks like it hurts for mina and yeah i like that the match ended in a flash pin since it like protects anna and then two further like protect her and like build her up she attacks both mina and mariah may at the end really good stuff and it also like uh starts a feud between her and tony storm like a mini feud mini boss before she wrestles serena deep or you know what bring back take on she have them tag against this stardom team but of course the stardom team needs to win so yeah after this is willow celebration which Honestly, Swerve should have gotten, but as TBS champion, this was definitely called for. And of course, since she's feuding with Mercedes, light needs to be shined on this. This was an awesome celebration segment. I like Stat's opening poem that's so like weird and cute. I like this sort of hostile relationship they have with Stoke. And like the cherry on the pie is Caprice Coleman being brought in just to sing Willow's theme. It's so out of left field that that it's just quirky enough to work. But yeah, as for the meat of this segment, Willow has like everything. She can cut a promo, she's good in the ring, and she's like really good looking. She outshined the CEO so much. It was like night or day, the quality of their promos. But Mercedes did well enough. She still gets the message across. I like that they're bringing in... Like the New Japan thing, the history, the continuity. But there should have been a video package of that whole thing between her and Willow. Just like with like Jack Perry and him tearing up his contract. We get a package of that. So why not of Monet? So I like this intrigue they're trying to build with that attack. And like the sort of sauciness on Stat. But when Stat eventually turns heel though, like after watching Rampage and Collision... How will that affect her relationship with the best friends? But yeah, honestly, if it was me, you never turn Willow heel. And you know what? After some thinking, Stat as well. Like, this trio between her, Willow, and Stoke still has legs. Like, this thing can still, like, be something. Mercedes should turn heel. So after this is, like, a small continuation of the overarching storyline... It does its job. It bridges the gap from here to the main event that Tony Khan and Jack Perry are going to meet. Like, this is where they say it. And yeah. And then after this is the best match on the card. It's the gauntlet match that they don't even advertise the rules. It just happens and the commentators explain it during the actual effing match. But the rules are amazing. It's so chaotic because there's an undeclared number of participants. Like, the match could end with just two guys if one was weak enough to lose in like five minutes or god knows how long the intervals were because there wasn't a timer i don't even think it was consistent between entrances or even the whole damn roster can show up the possibilities are endless with this one just maybe like add a timer 
That's like the only thing missing as well as like the rules plastered on the Titantron. But yeah, this match involved multiple people. But my standouts, like the ones who actually made a difference, were Will Ospreay, Lance Archer, and Kyle O'Reilly. Like everyone brought their A game, but some weren't as noticeable as the others. Like of course, the starters of the match, Jay White, Dante Martin, couldn't do anything like crazy, anything much, with there just being the two of them there. Jay Lethal's pretty old, and I don't think he specializes in like eye catching moves in, in like a spot fest match like this. And yeah, same with Penta. It was too early on into the match. There was no climax for him to like do his stuff. But when Kyle O'Reilly showed up and he heel hooked the shit out of everyone, just a very fun wrestling style. It's like a Shibata esque, Kurt Angle esque wrestling style. It's really fun. Next MVP is Will Ospreay, especially because of his interaction with the various other people especially Lance Archer and Jay White because of like the New Japan connection there. The moment of the match was when he went face to face with Jay, like no doubt about it. The New Japan element made this match for me. And the most New Japan thing about it was Lance Archer finally dominating people. Like this guy should be on TV. He should be like a champion or something. Hell, he should have won this match because he just straight up dominated the shit out of everyone for like a good couple of minutes. Spot of the match was when he like caught Dante in the air, got Jay in this like sort of reverse DDT grip, and then choke slam Dante on Jay. Like that was the best spot of the night. So yeah, I think they managed to successfully bring Lance Archer back from like nothing, a non-entity, to like a mid-carder. Like a mid-card monster who can take the TNT title, international title, whatever. He should be champion before he retires. Finish of the match was pretty out of the ordinary. Yeah, this is what I love about AW. Like, they're not scared about doing these, like, rough-looking, one stacked on top of another, out-of-nowhere spot. Osprey Hidden Blades Commander, as the dude is going after a pin. That's really cool in my eyes. So yeah, there's not much I don't like about this, except that it's for the opportunity for a title match for a title that honestly should be merged with something else. Like, I could accept two mid-card titles, but you have the FTW that I actively ignore. You have the Continental title that honestly should be a trophy. And there's the real deal TNT title that I agree should be shown on a collision or something. And then you'll have the second mid-card title on Dynamite. I also feel like this is a good way to, like, isolate Osprey from Swerve for a while. Like, you can't just have Swerve lose the title in a couple of months. But honestly, Osprey, I don't think, needs a title. Especially the international title, which is below him. Bright side is, he elevates it. But in my opinion, you can just have Will lose at All In. And have him go for it, like, next year, when he wins something like the Continental Classic. Because for Will to get to the belt, like the world title, he needs to lose the international title before that. So yeah, I think it would be smart to have Swerve be the first one to beat him then some lower card guy for the international title just saying so yeah after this is the jericho segment i like this gimmick this like learning tree thing i also like that he beat hook for the ftw title but the ftw title should be in the trash like that shouldn't be a thing it should just be like an accessory or something but not an actual recognized aw championship belt like it shouldn't be the aew ftw title like, for me, it would elevate Jericho more if he throws it in the trash rather than holding on to it. And then as for this whole gimmick, I like it. It can propel new stars. It can preserve Jericho's career. It's actively playing into the dirt sheet talk about Jericho. The segment was getting good, but just like the random appearance of Big Bill was jarring as hell. He should have been called out or like participated in tryouts instead of like being this voluntary underling of an FTW champion. Like, come on, FTW title should not, should not exist anymore. And after watching Collision, it doesn't get any better. The tryout turns out to be a squash match. Come on, wasting TV time. They could have gotten to this position with something better. And since the Shibata segment connects to this, I'm just going to talk about it now. I don't like that they're feeding Shibata to Jericho because Shibata's getting his hair back. Like, not only the hair, like, like the entire look, he's getting the physique back, he's getting the skills back. He's getting closer and closer to becoming pre-injury Shibata. 
I don't expect him to win any world titles or anything, but maybe like losing world title matches, winning mid-card titles, just not the TNT title, and don't have him lose to like one of the coldest acts that you have now. His gimmick is fun, the fans like it, it's no main event gimmick, but I still think he has some gas left in him that he shouldn't be losing to Chris Jericho or be associated with Hook. And least of all, that FTW title that's like just a piece of trash. That title makes me tune out of Dynamite. So after this is the Don Callis family segment, and it's okay. Don has lost most of his gravitas since his dudes keep losing. Osprey's the only guy carrying that team. It's kind of like Goku and all of his friends. Will Osprey is Goku. Everyone else keeps losing. But I like the ongoing story that Osprey is not willing to use the Tiger Driver 98 or whatever Will Osprey calls it. He doesn't fit the faction since he's a babyface. Clearly, his values do not align with the Don Cal's family anymore, so why even keep him there? And he already fought the members, he shouldn't be part of it anymore. I like the piece of in ring storytelling that they did in the match. I like that they're mentioning it here, since a lot of fans apparently don't know how to watch matches and need to be told what's happening. It's all stupid. It's all so stupid. AEW do storytelling. A lot of them are just not that good or like poorly executed or burn out, fizzle out at the end. But this one looks like it's leading somewhere, so I'm pretty good with it. So after this is the main event, John Moxley versus Powerhouse Hobbs. My god, I don't like brawl matches. They're the worst. Mox and Hobbs are capable of much more. Powerhouse should be grappling, like taking people down, slamming them all over the place, and not be like just punching people. I hate when the whole match is like this, and it's made worse by the injury that happens on like a fluke sort of running attack to the post. But like a pro, Mox makes Hobbs look very, very strong at the end, even with that injured leg, paradigm shift, kick out, and then he chokes him out. I hate brawl matches so much. You know one of the most praised brawl matches ever? WrestleMania 17, Stone Cold vs. The Rock. I fell asleep after that match. The opening package with the Limp Biscuit music video was much better. I believe that match is like, remembered much better because of that opening video and that song. Which is Limp Biscuit's only good song. So yeah, F brawl matches, get it off my TV. If you wanted a striking match... Just watch any like Japanese promotions matches. Have it be like that for Mox, but Hobbs should be slamming people like all over the place, outside the ring, everywhere. He's called Powerhouse for a reason, and now he's going to be out for a long time. So yeah, for the real main event, it's Jack Perry, Tony Khan, face-to-face. But it's more of just Jack Perry talking at Tony Khan. I think everyone already knows what happens. I'm not going to run it down. I like that Jack tries to get in Tony Khan's head, in his good graces, get him comfortable, have him like drop his guard. But honestly, if Tony Khan had his guard up, Jack would still kick his ass. So yeah, I, I know Tony Khan said that he'll never be like an on-screen character, but I believe like the story they're trying to tell regarding these like EVPs who are like trying to take control, the only way it works is if Tony Khan's out of the picture. They have to take him out because he'll always be there to like put a damper on their power. The elite will be less threatening if there's like a mediator there. So by removing Tony Khan, it makes them more of the bad guys. And it makes an opening for Kenny Omega to step in in proxy of Tony Khan. I really like the direction of this, but this can easily fizzle out like the other feuds that Tony failed. This is a feud that I believe can go for like three, four, or even like a year's worth of a pay-per-view cycle. I love the attack, the idea of the attack. I love that when the Young Bucks tried to help, they teased an EVP trigger. I like that they like did the Tony Khan driver instead. But for the bad parts, I think Tony should have sold better. That delayed reaction was a bit noticeable. He fell the wrong way, and he should be like in a fetal position. Like when you're hit in the stomach, you're going to try to contract it. But yeah, the whole segment, really good. Shocking. If Dynamite wasn't coast to coast, I think this would have like reached 800k. Or just not as low as it did. So yeah, that's my review of Dynamite. 
I'm gonna be reviewing Collision and Rampage since I think the matches there were a lot better. But yeah, enjoy this short return. Hopefully my schedule doesn't get too bad. So yeah, bye bye